Let us bow our heads. Father God, we come to say thank you. Lord, for another day. Thank you for allowing us to stumble again in the house of prayer. And our Father, as we come now to share your word, we ask that you open up our understanding and feed us with knowledge from our high. Lord, give us courage to be able to understand and to do according to your word and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of you that have Bibles, if you would turn with me to the 27th chapter of Matthew. The 27th chapter of Matthew. And then uh, I want to read the two different scriptures, I mean, two different verses out of that 27th chapter. 27th chapter and the 33rd to the 35th verse. Then we'll move over to the 57th verse to the 60th verse. Everybody have it? Yes. And when they had come to the place called Golconda, that is, that is to say, the place of the skull, they gave him sour wine, make uh, you will probably say vinegar, sour wine mingled with uh, gall uh, to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. And uh, I want to go to the uh, 57 verse to verse 60. Everybody have it? Now when Eve had come, there came a rich man from Abathias named Joseph. He himself had become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate commanded that the body to, <clears throat> the body to be given to him. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen, uh, linen cloth, and laid him in his new tomb. And when he had hewed, he had hewed out of the rocks, and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb, and departed. Now I want to talk about. Uh, the tree and the tomb. The tree and the tomb. There are, and there is a movement afoot to diminish the importance of the life and death of Jesus. On the disguise of goodness, there are those who would discredit it all together. Some claim the story of the cross is unhealthy for the tender mind of little children. They suggest that it is, it is traumatic and very emotional and uh, very, discouraged, very disturbing with the details of the cross. This is not surprising in a world that labor fiercely, brothers and sisters, to remove the consequences of sin and to disclaim the existence of Satan. Men acknowledge a Holy Spirit, but stubbornly deny the being of an unholy spirit. There's a unholy spirit as well as a holy spirit. 
Now, I want to take the, I want to take the time to kind of explain that to you. God breathed, God, when God breathed into man, he breathed into him the breath of life. And it became a living soul. And then when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe it's uh, around chapter uh, 7 and verse 12, somewhere in that area, uh, <clears throat> thereabout. But in the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll find where it says, when we die, our spirit goes back, our spirit and our soul go back to God, but our body goes back to the dirt from which it comes from. And so when, man, when, so when man was born, he was born with a Holy Spirit. Are y'all with me? So when God made him and made her out of him, they were Holy Spirits. And so, and so therefore, they had no sin, they knew no sin. God could come and walk and talk with them in the Garden of Eden and had a, 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 a great relationship and great communication between man and God because they was a part of God, His Spirit. Alright? Now, when Eve ate of the tree in the garden, convinced her husband to eat of the tree in the garden, they lost their holiness. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. They lost their holiness. And so their communication, their relationship with God was not like it was. Everything, when I say everything, everything that was born after Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden, everything became unholy. And uh, un, with an unholy spirit. Even the fish, even the chicken, even the dog, even the cat. Why do you think a lion want to chase everything and kill it? If he can't eat it, he chases it out of his territory. And so when you look at nature, man, when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, he said nature, he said holiness out of his bounds and reason. Y'all stay with me. And so therefore that everything that was born after Adam and Eve sinned was born into sin. And had to learn what holiness and righteousness is. David said, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Which means, brothers and sisters, until we learn, until we are taught holiness and taught righteousness, that the sin is part of our natural life. Are y'all stay with me? Now, you might say, well, Reverend, I don't know about that. My mother was going to church. My dad was going to church. They were still born in sin. All right, and, and, and so don't let nobody tell you, I don't care how holy they are, if they have a child, a child born in sin. <laughs> if you don't believe what I'm saying, you wait a little while, you know, they start cutting up. <laughs> and they'll learn some cuss words that you never heard of. <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> and, and so man, man want to diminish uh, sin. As we examine the Christian message, the tree and the tomb are at the center of existence. It's at the center of existence. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jew is fumbling block. Unto the Greeks is foolishness. Are y'all with me? And to the Greek, there are those who don't, who don't believe that there is a Christ. To the Jews who believe that Christ is still yet to come. Are y'all with me? 
And so uh, the songwriter declared, In the cross of Christ our glory, tower over the wreck of life, yeah. all the light and sacred story gathered around its head. Uh, seven line. When <clears throat> when the world of life overtakes and gather overtakes me the hope and deceit and fear. The agony never shall the cross forsake me. Lord, it glows with peace and joy. What the songwriter is trying to say to us, no matter how gloom he get, no matter how dark he get, no matter how hard my day is, my life is, I'm going to always look to the cross. I'm going to always look to the hill. I'm going to always look to Christ. And no matter what comes against us, we are always look to Christ because Christ is the answer to our problem, our situation today. Can I get a witness? The cross, the tree, must be taught, brothers and sisters, with the tomb. Because if the tree and the tomb is left out of the teaching, the teaching has no meaning. Y'all stay with me. I want to talk to you about another 15 minutes or so. And then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let you go. If men are to receive the full impact of Christ, of the Christian message, brothers and sisters, then we must look to the tree. We must look towards the to, towards the tomb. We must reveal the reality of life in us. If we are brother and sister, become uh, all that God expects and wants us to be, then we must constantly reveal the cross. We must constantly look to the tomb in order to receive that. It unveils the meaning of the nature of the cross, the tree. It reveals the, uh, the ugliness of sin and the beauty of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. According to Romans 6 and 23, the cross stretches horizon, shows the evil of man. Uh, the cross shows vertically to show the love of God. You remember where the children of Israel was in the was out in the wilderness and they got bitten by poisonous reptiles. God told Moses to make a cross and hang the snake vertically across, across the cross. And everyone that is bitten by the snake come beneath the cross, they shall be healed. Can I get a witness? And so what brothers and sisters, what is saying they need is that you need to come beneath the cross of Calvary, which is known as the tree, in order to be healed. There is an ugliness in sin. The natural sensibility of man recoils at this ugliness. Sin blinds. Sin robs us. Sin kills. Y'all want to stay with me? Yes, sir. It casts men and women into darkness. Yes, it physically happened around Calvary. Now from the sixth uh, hour to the ninth hour there was darkness over the face of the earth. According to Matthew 27 and 45. And so it was and so it was, brothers and sisters, that the, the darkness was to let man know that there was a dark day in their lives. Can I get a witness? So he let the sun shine for three hours in the dawn of the day so that man could understand that this is truly the Son of God. Sin places men into darkness. Y'all want to pray with me? In sin, we doubt the truth of God. 
Scripture says that we are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so some men, when they are in sin, they will never learn what the truth is about Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Satan led men to this in the beginning. He led Eve to sin uh, in his conversation and saying that the leaves on the tree is good. And God said, do not touch the tree. But he will lead men to compromise the word of God. And so in the garden of Eden, we even learn to compromise the word of God. Satan said to Eve, you shall not die. And God said that you will surely die. And so he compromised the word of God and encouraged her husband to eat of that same tree. And so when you compromise your faith and your belief in God, brothers and sisters, you are giving up your right to uh, the righteousness and the blessing of God. And I will never let anybody come or let me compromise my blessings with God. Amen. Can I get a witness here today? And so God said that you shall uh, surely die. And ever since that time, uh, men and women have been dying uh, day by day. And one of the things about death, death has no respect of a person. Uh, they call on the young uh, as well as the old. They call on the healthy as well as the unhealthy. Can I get a witness? I want you to know today, my brother and my sister, I'm going to focus on the cross of Calvary. I'm going to focus on the tomb of Jesus. Is that right now? Let me move a little further. Thou shalt not die. God did not mean that your situation, uh, brother, sister, especially after you have been treated uh, the way you have. God said, uh, thou shalt not steal. Uh, God did not mean, uh, and so Satan said, uh, God did not mean uh, after you have been, uh, you have not had a job in a long time. Uh, that Satan will tell you it's all right to steal uh, in order to live. Uh, be God good today. Uh, you have a family to feed. Uh, Satan will put things in your mind. Uh, that will confuse you against the word of God. When God said, uh, my brother and my sister, uh, thou shalt not co commit adultery. Uh, Satan said, uh, God did not mean that uh, in your situation, uh, now your husband and your wife can run around on you. Uh, and you have a right to get even with them. Uh, in that right, I heard the Bible saying that uh, don't throw a stone for stone. Uh, ain't God good today, uh, my brother and my sister? Uh, and if anyone shall add anything to the word or take away from it, uh, they lose their, their place in eternal life. Uh, according to Revelation uh, 22 and 19, uh, ain't God good? Uh, and so I'm going to try to say the word uh, as close as I can uh, and the best that I know how to go. When it comes down uh, to Revelation, uh, God calls his home. Uh, I want to hear him say, Seven, uh, well done. Uh, I can take a seven. Uh, in my good today, uh, sin not only plays me in darkness, but love, me and love the darkness and God do it today. This is condemn, uh, condemnation uh, in the light, in the light. Because me and uh, love the world uh, and love the darkness of the world. Uh, but I thank God today Jesus came into the world uh, and brought the light uh, and the of darkness uh, in the life of me. Uh, he opened my eyes and opened my heart. And I want to tell you that you can rejoice in the truth. He said, Don't rejoice.
hasn't, if Judah hasn't had any Jews, how many people that died? Yeah. Jerusalem was packed with folks that day. Folks looked like they were dead. And, and, they, and they, could, they could see them. People could see them. But they were yet dead. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Thank God for the tree. Thank God for the tomb. Remember, you remember nothing else. Because he went in the grave. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For our sin, he took it to the cross. He took it to the grave. And he buried it. Took it to the cross, paid the price. Then he took the sin to the grave and buried. Yeah. Now, if you, if you pick it up, 